Tonight, my team and I face our biggest challenge yet. We're going to a nearby evil haunted school to see if we can catch sight of the evil ghost that haunts the evil haunted playground. We've got our gear, we've got our team together, and we're ready to roll. It's time to hunt some ghosts. on the Evil Haunted Playground. I'm Chip, and my team and I are the Ghost Hunter Finder guys. This is insane. Not only are these guys convinced that ghosts are real, which they are not, by the way, they're convinced that they're going to capture one on video with a bunch of quote-unquote scientific instruments, which looks to me like an MP3 voice recorder and a flashlight. You think this is night vision? This isn't night vision. Chip colored over the camera lens with a green highlighter. I'm participating in this under duress, since this is the only way I could get Chip to agree to take me to the place in his allegedly haunted woods where my drone went down. Okay, here we are, outside the haunted playground. It's cold, and there's a scent of evil in the air. That smell is from the paper factory over in the next county. We've been out here with our camera for hours, and so far we haven't seen anything. But I've got a feeling that... Wait... Wait... Dude, dude, dude! Dude, do you see that? Uh, do I see what? Dude, there's like an evil presence over there. And, and, holy crap, dude, it's moving the swing. Check it out, dude, it's moving the swing. Your production assistant is pushing it with a stick. I can see her crouching behind that bush over there. Cut, cut. Dude, we talked about this. Okay, everyone back to one. We're going again. Hello and welcome to Spooky Tales with Steve the Cat. I'm your host, Steve the Cat. It's November and we're well into fall, but there are still plenty of movies to talk about here on Spooky Tales. Tonight we're doing a good found footage mockumentary about a demonically possessed teen. And yes, this is the film I mentioned weeks ago. But we had to make some changes to the schedule to accommodate Halloween, so here we are. We'll get to that in a minute, but first we're going to spend a few minutes talking to Chip, who is the star of PBDC TV's new series, The Ghost Hunter Finder Guys. Hey Chip, can you hear me? I read you loud and clear, dude. So tell me about your new show. Well, I've been a ghost hunter for a long time, going back to when I used to hunt ghosts with my girlfriend, Vanessa. So we decided it was time to finally put a show together to document everything we've seen over the years. And it doesn't bother you at all that there's no such thing as ghosts and everything in your show has been faked. What? Dude! Don't be a dick, dude! Well, it's true, right? I mean, we just heard Meerkat talking about your production assistant hiding behind a bush. Ghosts are real, dude! And the haunted woods are real too, dude! That's where we were years ago when those ghosts came along and stole Vanessa away from me. I see. And who is Vanessa? Vanessa was the love of my life, dude. I'm still, like, totally heartbroken since she disappeared. Ever since then, I've been searching the haunted woods for those ghosts. I've got a score to settle with them. And you're sure Vanessa didn't just leave you for another guy? No way, dude. I saw it happen. A bunch of ghosts took her away and she disappeared. So she left you for a dead guy? No, dude! A gang of ghosts took her away into the haunted woods. So she left you for a group of dead guys. Stop being a dick, dude! Vanessa was the love of my life! Oh, Vanessa. 
Well, she was the love of your life, right up until she ran off with a group of ghosts. Were these ghosts from a rival fraternity, by the way? No, dude, they live in the woods near here. There's a cave nearby that they stay in during the day, but at night they haunt the woods. That's where the monkey dude's camera drum crashed, so I'm taking him there. And we all appreciate that, but isn't there something else in that cave, too? Yeah, that's Herbert. But he's a cave monster, not a ghost. We'll have to stay clear of him, too. So this cave is both haunted and populated by monsters. Yeah, frickin' West Virginia, dude. Frickin' West Virginia. Well, it is basically a real-life version of Pandora from Avatar. So one last question. Is Herbert on the prowl like that group of ghosts, or is he already taken? I'm just worried that he may try to woo Meerkat away from us. You're disrespecting me, dude! Stop disrespecting me! Dude, you're, you're totally a dick, dude. I'm going to bed. Well, now that we've plumbed the depths of Chip's love life and settled our contractual obligation to promote his new show, it's time to get down to the business of horror movies. Thank you so much for joining us. We're glad you're here. Now pour yourself a drink and sit back, because here we go. There's something evil inside of me. And she thinks she's possessed. Yes, possessed. What are oxys and benzos? Is wow. that what you said? Are you kidding me? But I kind of always try to be nice to the new kids. Find anything good? Where did the company get your resume again? Craigslist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I prefer not to take their claims seriously and legitimize those delusions. Whatever happened to her, happened to her because whatever she brought in the room with her, okay? Jesus, 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 Tina misses you in hell. Because when I stop, I want to slit your fucking throat. Put that down! Carson, put that knife down! Oh no, you got your promo footage today, I'll tell you that right now. It's time for our featured film review. Tonight we're going to talk about a film called Inner Demons. More specifically, a film called Inner Demons that came out in the year 2014. I am being specific about the year because there are multiple films floating around out there with the name either Inner Demon or Inner Demons. So we are talking about the 2014 film. This is a found footage supernatural horror film, as we mentioned, was released in the year 2014, directed by Seth Grossman, and the cast includes Laura Vosberg, Kevin McClellan, and Kate Whitney. So let's get into setting your expectations for this film. If you're going to sit down and watch Inner Demons, what you should expect is a better than expected supernatural found footage horror film about demonic possession. Now, if you like The Exorcist, or The Blair Witch Project, or Paranormal Activity, I think you will have a chance of liking Inner Demons. Now, that's kind of an odd trio of films, so let me expound on that a little bit. The Exorcist, obviously about demonic possession, but not a found footage film. The Blair Witch Project, found footage film, but not about demonic possession. Paranormal Activity, kind of uh, the closest thing to a combination of the two, somewhat about demonic possession and found footage. So the three of those all have elements that go with Inner Demons. If you like any or all of those three, you'll probably enjoy Inner Demons. So let's get into calibrating your expectations. This is the scale we like to use. On the far left side of the scale, we have very campy films such as Jason X. On the far right side of the scale, we have very serious films such as The Silence of the Lambs. As always, this scale is not an indicator of the quality of the film. It's an indicator of what your mindset needs to be going into the film in order to enjoy it. 
Inner Demons is a pretty serious film. We've moved it pretty far to the right side of the scale. There's not really a lot of comedy in this film, other than people mocking the guy from being hired off of Craigslist that you saw earlier. But beyond that, it's a pretty dark film, a uh, well done film, but um, not really a, a popcorn movie, a, kind of a, a more dark, dark in tone, found footage film. Before we go any farther, we need to do a vocabulary lesson. Now this, of course, is the part of the show where we discuss new and innovative words and phrases in an effort to stay ahead of social media bots and algorithms that would otherwise try to ban our conversation. Social media bots and algorithms are always evolving, therefore our language must evolve if we're going to stay ahead of them. Two terms this week. The first one is a new term. We're going to talk about cranial sublimation. Yes, that is a mouthful. Cranial sublimation is a noun referring to the action in a horror movie of somebody using a shotgun to transition his own head from a solid state to directly to vapor. If you know anything about sublimation, that's when something goes from solid state directly to vapor. Cranial sublimation is when somebody does it to his own head using a shotgun. Our second term is a slang term that we've done earlier on this show. This goes back, I believe, all the way to season one of Spooky Tales with Steve the Cat called Leaf on the Wind. This is a slang term that refers to the action of suddenly killing off a major character without warning or foreshadowing in a way that is quick, simple, and stunning in its finality. This, of course, is inspired by the movie Serenity, which was based on the TV series Firefly. If you're not familiar with that, there was a character who was a pilot, and before engaging in a very difficult maneuver, he said, I'm a leaf on the wind. Watch how I twirl. And then, after he successfully pulls it off, he is suddenly, without warning or foreshadowing, killed off in a way that was quick, simple, and stunning in its finality. So let's get into a film summary about Inner Demons. In this film, film school student Jason joins the crew of a reality TV show called Intervention as a production assistant. What is Intervention about? Well, it documents drug interventions and recovery of those who have been intervened with. The crew begins filming at the Morris home, where formerly straight-A student Carson has become a drug addict in need of help. The crew chronicles her intervention as well as her treatment in the recovery center, but as the film goes on, you're going to start to wonder, is there something more at play with Carson's addictions than simple addiction? That leads us to our villain profile for this film. Now we never see the villain in this film, but the villain is referred to as Moloch. So there's no image to use from the film, so this is just a historical image of Moloch, may or may not be relevant to the, the film. In the film, Moloch is a demon. Now, I don't, I can't say whether or not that is historically accurate as far as the mythology, mythology goes. But in this film, Moloch's special powers are not completely defined, but they do include the ability to possess humans. And once possessed, the human takes on superhuman strength and stealth and the ability to bend your body at odd angles that seems to happen in so many supernatural films. There's really no signature technique or signature weapon associated with this film, but it is worth noting that, at least historically, Moloch is historically associated with child sacrifice. So let's talk about some of the things I liked about this film. Well, for starters, although the premise is familiar, the film is solidly executed and it is better than many found footage films. As found footage films go, this one is actually pretty well done and I, I liked it. It is pretty well done. It's a pretty good film. It is well acted and well directed. Laura Vosberg's performance is particularly good. She plays the girl Carson who's been possessed. And because she's portraying somebody who's been possessed, she has to show quite a range as an actress running from childlike innocent to purely demonic, which she pulls off very well. I actually cared about the film's characters. The film does a good job of character development. And the behind the scenes portrayal of reality TV is unflattering but realistic. Now, it's not without flaw. There are some things that could have been better about the film Inner Demons. And we'll start with the CGI special effects at the end. They were a bit weak. Now, they were not bad, but they were not impressive either. And they were obviously computer generated. At no point are you going to sit down and watch the film Inner Demons and say, wow, I can't tell. Is that computer generated or is that practical special effect? 
It's obviously computer generated. For me, it doesn't really detract from the movie because so many found footage films use computer generated special effects for budgetary reasons. And uh, it's not really a special effects movie. So um, to me, it works, but the, spe the CGI special effects aren't gonna break any ground. The story is very predictable. Effectively, it is a retelling of The Exorcist. Now, this is a problem we've talked about with many, many horror films and the horror genre in general is that the stories are often formulaic, which makes them often predictable. Now, this one does have some twists to it that make it worth watching, so you're not going to be able to predict every little thing that happens in the movie. But at a high level, this is more or less a retelling of The Exorcist. Many of the characters in the film are intentionally unlikable, and the key word here is intentionally. Uh, the cast and crew of the reality TV show, you're not supposed to like them. They are not likable people. They are bad people. Um, but you're not going to like them when you watch the movie, so just keep in mind that you're not supposed to. And some will be disappointed with the ending of the film. I'm not going to spoil the ending for you, but some of you are going to be disappointed with how the film ends. And finally, just a side note, I've got to say this, Carson is way too young for Jason. Um, Jason starts to take an interest in Carson as the film goes on. And uh, remember, Jason is the film school student. Carson is the straight A high school student who is illegally too young for Jason. Jason, you need to set your sights elsewhere, buddy. And now a word from our benevolent overlords at PBDC TV, your nightly heartbeat of horror. qualified psychic and spiritual medium who gives accurate psychic readings through a range of mediums. She is a professional consultant who uses her intuition to offer guidance to all of her clients, encouraging them to move in a positive direction and face the challenges that may lie ahead of them. She is also certified Reiki Grand Master and Shaman. Follow her on Facebook or YouTube each week for her weekly free live readings.
This is Professor Redger Fluffosaurus from Spooky Tales with Steve the Cat, and when I'm not hosting Monster Chat or knocking down small Japanese cities, I'm watching PBDC TV. Now back to the show. So let's get to Steve's scorecard. Off the bat, kills, I counted five. Bare breasts, none. It's not that kind of film. Dean Nogginings, there is one. Cranial sublimations, our term from earlier, there is one. So, one denogging, one cranial sublimation, that tells you that we have one denogging via shotgun. Turkey timers, we have two. Uh, turkey timers being a physical reaction that happens when lovely ladies are in cold weather. Um, there's two of those in this film, so you're at least partially uh, given some uh, reprieve from the lack of bare breasts. Ornamental set enhancements. There is one. Yes, there is one scene where for no good reason one of the characters is in a bikini. And there is no good reason for it other than to say, hey, I guess the filmmakers wanted somebody in a bikini in this scene. They easily could have shot the scene a different way. Pez dispense rings, you get one. Leaf on the winds, you get one. Projectile vomitings, you get one of those and it is nasty. And finally, camera glitches. Yes, the old trope in found footage films of making the digital camera glitch whenever something supernatural happens. I counted 18 of them. It does get a little bit tiresome, but that is how they let you know that um, Carson has shifted gears and gone from uh, herself to the demon talking and back again. Uh, so the camera glitches are kind of a, a narration tool, but it, it's just it's done in so many found footage movies, it becomes a little bit tiresome. But, of course, with your viewing of this film, you also get some bonus features, such as Carson's awesome goth makeup. And where you have goth makeup, you have a disappointed parent who says things like, she started dressing in that goth way. Yes, Carson's mother is not happy with her daughter dressing in, quote, that goth way, unquote. Um, little pet peeve of mine, or not pet peeve, just something I wondered about. I wonder how much that Jason, the film student, is paying for the degree that he used to get hired off of Craigslist as a PA on a reality show. Yes, he's probably paying five figures, if not six figures, for his film student for his film degree, and uh, he's working as a PA hired off of Craigslist on a reality show, probably making not much more than minimum wage. Not necessarily a great use of your time there, Jason. You get the stereotypical religious immigrant head nurse. Yes, every film involving an exorcism has to have a butler or a maid or a nurse or a doctor or somebody who says, yes, I saw something like this in my village. Yes, Hollywood does tend to stereotype religious people. Jason, going back to what I mentioned before, isn't Carson too young for you? And I mean like illegally too young for you. Dude, you need to start looking for playmates your own age, okay? Play with somebody else. Just put Carson out of your mind. You get, in addition to Carson and Jason, you get jailbait in a bikini. I mentioned the ornamental set enhancement earlier. Yes, the, uh, the object of the ornamental set enhancement is supposedly in the movie like 17 years old. Now, in reality, the actress is older than that, but in the fictional world of the film, she is jailbait. Why do demons speak Latin anyway? This is something that I have often wondered. Now, back in the days when uh, Catholic masses were all performed in Latin and everybody spoke Latin, it would make sense that demons would speak Latin. Why do they do it now? Unless it's just to prove their authenticity. Uh, I, you know, feel free to sound off in the comments about that. It's something that I don't know a whole lot about and would uh, be interested in hearing your thoughts. And finally, one of Carson's friends happens to say, you're going to make me look really bad on TV, aren't you? And uh, in the context of uh, the movie, which I'm not going to give away, oh yes, we are going to make you look really bad on TV. One of Carson's friends has done something really, really bad, which comes out in the final act of the film. And uh, she's concerned, most of all, not about what she's done, but the fact that it's going to make her look bad on television. So Steve's final score for this film, we're going to give it three paws out of four. 
I'm going to say this was a borderline two and a half paw film, but I'm giving it three because it is better than most found footage films in terms of quality. Now, it is largely predictable, but enjoyable due to good writing and good acting. I like this film. I have watched it several times. Normally, I don't do um, low-budget found footage films on this show, but this is one that I wanted to do because I think it's worth watching. It is worth everybody checking out. So the film is Inner Demons. 2014 version. You can find it free with ads on Tubi. You can probably find it on other streaming services as well. I enjoyed it. It's not uh, what you'd call an event film. It's not something where you're going to invite a bunch of people over and build an evening out of it, but it is one of those good films to watch when you unwind before bed. So two and a half paws. Nope. Make that three paws for Inner Demons 2014. And that is our featured film review. Hello, is anybody on the premises? See, there's so look, there's somebody standing back there by the trees. Look. There, yeah, up there. Yeah. It looks like a guy in a suit. What the hell is that? Yo. Rose, I'm telling you, I look through the camera, he's there. I look up, he's not there. He's with you! No. You got him here! No. We've reached the end of another episode of Spooky Tales with Steve the Cat, but as is our tradition, before we go, we're going to take just a couple of minutes to talk about some other stuff Steve watched this week. This week, we are going to talk about a film called Always Watching a Marble Hornet's Story. I found this film free with ads on Tubi. This is a 2015 American found footage horror film that is inspired by the Slenderman online mythology and based upon the web series Marble Hornets. Now, last month, Roots Bleed Red did a story about the Slenderman. Uh, this movie was mentioned at the time, so we're now we're reviewing it. So if you're really interested in the Slenderman, go back through the archives and find the Roots Bleed Red episode from last month about Slenderman. You'll learn a lot about the subject. As far as this movie goes, in this film, Milo, Sarah, and Charlie are part of a local news reporting team that is investigating the mysterious disappearance of a local man and his family. Uh, mysterious in that they just kind of up and vanished. And um, when the bank comes to seize their house, all their furniture is still there. There's literally still food on the table. It's like they just disappeared out of nowhere. Or excuse me, disappeared and went nowhere. During the investigation, Milo reviews a set of mini DV tapes found in the family's home. Yes, of course he does. It's a found footage movie. That's the premise. The tapes seem to tell the story of a mysterious, faceless man in a suit who can appear and disappear at will and can only be seen through the camera. He starts kind of appearing just in the background at family events outside at first, but then uh, they start seeing him more and more frequently. Milo's investigations unfortunately attract the attention of the same faceless figure in a suit who begins stalking the three of them. So Milo, Sarah, and Charlie spend the latter part of the film on the run trying to figure out what to do about the mysterious faceless man who is pursuing them. So what's the verdict on this film? Well, I like it. The film is good. I would say it's good, but not great. It's a good found footage movie that is worth checking out. Uh, I would not plan to make an event out of it, but it is a good one to watch before bed. Uh, I would footnote that to say that if you are a, a big Slenderman fan, or if you and your friends are really fans of the Marvel Hornets web series or of the 
Slender Man story in general. It might be a good group film, but otherwise, this is one of those that's just kind of a good one to watch before bed on your own. If you are not familiar with the Slender Man story or are only a little bit versed in it, this movie is really a fun way to get pulled into the mythology. The film features an interesting story and it has some good scares. Now, on the downside, the film may be underwhelming to hardcore Slender Man buffs or devoted fans of the web series. And there is a little too much love triangle side drama and arguing in this film for my taste. But overall, I like this film and do recommend it. In fact, I have watched this one several times. So that is Always Watching. You can find it free with ads on Tubi. And that is some other stuff I watched this week. Well, that wraps up another episode of Spooky Tales with Steve the Cat. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed it. Of course, we always love to hear from you, so feel free to sound off in the comments about your favorite movies about spirits and possession or anything else that comes to mind. And as always, if you did enjoy the show, please give us a like and a share. The best thing you can do to help us out is to share this video. If you want to stay up to speed on our latest videos and other goings on, you can follow us and subscribe on social media. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Rumble, and Facebook. Spooky Tales with Steve the Cat is available exclusively through PBDC TV, your nightly heartbeat of horror. If you're interested in horror movies, true crime, creepy history, or unexplained events, we're sure to have a show for you. You can find us at PsychobunnyDC.com, and we're also on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Rumble. We also have a 100% Zuckerberg-free Discord site. If you would like to check it out, just head on over to PsychobunnyDC.com and click the link for an invitation. We're back again next week with another found footage mockumentary, and this one is really, really good, but really, really dark. It's going to be a great show, so we hope to see you then. In the meantime, everyone have a great week and stay safe. We'll see you again soon. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>